Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome back to Easy Mathematics. We thank God for another wonderful and a beautiful day. We want to continue with our basic eight lesson. Currently, or on basic eight, we are looking at how to write the set of factors of a given number, or writing the set of factors of a given number. We want to continue from there by looking at finding a set of factors of a given number. Now, with a set of factors of a given number, last week in basic eight or during the basic eight video lesson, we said that factors of a number are the numbers when multiplying gives you the number. So any two numbers you multiply and result in a, uh, in that answer, that gives you the factors of the number. So we're going to take an example for that because factors is something that is very simple. So finding the factors of numbers. So I've been given the first example. So it says that list the factors of 42 and 36 and determine the common factors. So we are listing the factors. We are just listing the factors of what? Of 36 and 42. And we said that factors are numbers when multiplied gives you the number. So here, if I want the factors of 42, Let's look at the first one. Factors of 42. Then I should look for two possible numbers. When I multiply, it gives me 42. And we also concluded by saying that if that is the case, that factors are the numbers when multiply gives you the number, then 1 times the number itself gives you the number. So if I multiply 1, times 42 it gives me the answer 42 which means that one is the factor of the number and the number is a factor of itself so under factors we say that one is a factor of all numbers or every number okay one is the factor or is a factor of every number and the number is a factor of itself so if 1 times 42 gives me 42, then the two numbers are factors of 42. Now, if this being the case, then let's try to make it simple for us to find the factors of 42. Now, if we are counting, you notice that from 2, we go to uh, 42. <laughs> Sorry, from 2, we go from 1, we go to 2. <laughs> Good. So then we are going to ask ourselves, 2 times what will give us 42. Then we have to ask this question because we are saying that factors of a number are the numbers when multiply gives you the number. So if I multiply 2 times 21, that gives me the result 42. Then it means 2 and 21 are factors of 42. Because when I multiply the 2, I'm getting what? 42. Are we there? Good. Then from 2 we go to 3. So let's ask ourselves. 3 times what number will give us 42? Mm. If you multiply 3 times 14, 3 times 14, that is going to give us what? 42. Because 3, 4, 12, remember 1, 3, 1, 3, plus 1, 42. So 3 times 14 will give us 42. Then it means 3 and 14 are factors of what? 42. Now let's go to 4. Is there any number times 4 that will give us 42? There is no number. 5. There is no number. 6. When we recite our 6 times table, we will notice that 6 times 7 is 42. Now from 6, we go to 7. So if the 7 has been written, then that's all. So therefore, what are the factors of 42? Then the factors of 42 are... Pick it in a U shape. That is 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 14, 21, and finally 42. So we have been able to list the factors of what? Of 42. Using this simple idea, 
that factors are the numbers when multiply gives you the number. So any two numbers you multiply, the result that you are going to get, we say that the number you use to multiply happens to be the factors of that number. So these are the possible numbers or the possible two numbers when you multiply gives you 42. So therefore they are all factors of what? Of 42. So it says list the factors of 42. I have listed it. Now let's go to 36. So factors of 36. With the same idea, what I know is that factors are numbers when multiplied gives you the number. And one and the number are factors of the number. So therefore, one times 36 are factors of 36. After one, we go to two. So let's ask ourselves, two times what will give us 36? Two times 18. So two times 18 is 36. Then 18 and two, or two and 18, happens to be factors of 36. Then we go to three. Three, one, three. 326, 339. Three, you notice that 31236. So it means 3 and 12 are factors of 36. Now let's go to 4. 414, 428, 4312, 4416, 4520, 4624, 4728, 4. Uh, 8, 32, 4, 9, 37, hey, 4, 9, 36, <laughs> so it means 4 and 9 are also factors of 36, uh, because 4, 9, 36, 4, 10, 40, in that order, so after 4, we go to 5, so let's see, is there any number times it? 515, 55 is 35, 55 is 25, 56, 30, 5, 7, 35. So it means 5 is not a factor of 36. Then we go to 6. 616, 6, 6, 2, 12, 6, 3, 18, 6, 4, 24, 6, 5, 30, 6, 6, 36. So if 6 times 6 is 36, then 6 is the factor of itself. Now after 6, we go to 7. Now you recite your 7 times table, you notice that there is no number times 7, now give you 36. Now let's go to 8. There is no number. Now we go to 9. But you notice that 9 has already been written here. So you don't go and write 9 times 4. Because 9 times 4 is the same as 4 times 9. So what are the factors of 36? Then the factors of 36 are, you pick it in a U shape. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Now when you pick it in a U shape, you notice that we have 6 here and 6 here. Now since you've written the 6, don't repeat the 6 again. So you go to the next one. 9, 12, 18, and 36. So now we have been able to list the factors of what? Of 36 and that of what? 42. Now the person said after listing the factors, determine the common factors. Okay? So what are common factors? Common factors are simply the factors that we can see in 42 and we can also see those same factors in 36. Good. So let's try to figure them out. So here, you can write here. Common factors. So we have one, one. We have two, we have two. We have three, three. We have six, six. And we have. That's it. So the common factors are one, two, Three, six. One, two, three, six. So these are the what? The common factors. So in basic eight, basically, to find the factors of a number, 
We should know that factors of a number are the possible numbers when multiply gives you the number. So this is what we need, okay? This is what is needed. But for us to get this, we have to know this. And if you are able to know this off head, it will help you to just list the factors of any number when they are being given without even what? Going using this approach. But if you think that to be, you want to be safe, to be simple for you, just take your time. Multiply them in order, then you get the pair of numbers or you get the factors of the numbers. And that brings us to an end of finding the factors of a given number. This happens to be uh, the same topic basic 9 are also treating. But with the basic 9, we are being introduced to uh, representing the information on a Venn diagram. So previously we've uploaded a video that is based on more explanation with the factors of the number. Now being able to know how to list the factors of a number in BZ8, we have to look at what Venn diagram is and solve real life problem using Venn diagram. Now for Venn diagram, we will be looking at some solutions or some examples because the introduction or the basis of Venn diagram has been uploaded in our previous, uh, it has been uploaded on our platform or on our videos you have is there. So in uploading this, we will try to uh, um, write the, or paste the link there so that you can get the introduction of the Venn diagram and you will be able to understand certain terms if in case you don't understand it here. So let's take an example because the introduction has been well explained in our previous video. So it says that there are 80 farmers in a certain village who grow maize and rats or both. Out of the 80 farmers, each of them grows at least one of the two crops, 50 grow maize and 60 grow rats. Illustrate the information on the Venn diagram. Find the number of farmers who grow both crops. So, with this question, once you are able to read and come across the word or the phrase at least, that should signal something to you. That once it is at least, then it means there is no compliment. What is compliment? Follow or Press on the link below and you know what the compliment is. It has been explained. So the compliment will not appear here because of the phrase at least. That means if the farmer didn't grow nothing at all, he grew one crop. So therefore, in answering my question, I am going to draw a data and I'll say, let the number you be my universal set and from the question universal set is the total number of people that were involved in the thing so here they said that there are 80 farmers so the total number of farmers that get themselves involved are 80 so that is our universal set then you ask yourself what are the crops being mentioned in the question they mentioned maize and rats so we use the first letter and say, let the number M be maize and the number R be rats. So from the question, the person is saying that out of the 80 farmers, each of them grows at least one of the 80 of the two crops. 50 grow maize. 50 grow maize. So it means the 50 and uh, the maize happens to be what? 50 farmers growing it. Then 60 grow rats. So now since there is at least, it means there is no complement. So if there is no complement, we will not involve it in our diagram. So therefore, what do I need? I need the number of farmers that happen to plant or grow maize and also rats. So that is going to give me the number M intersection R, which is both crops. 
And do we know? We don't. So since we don't know the number of farmers that grew both maize and rice, we represent it with the variable. That is why we said, let it be Y. So now being able to write the data, this with this, it is the question that we've written it like this. So this will help you to draw the diagram simply by just drawing your rectangular box, something like this. Then you have one ball, the other overlapping the other, one overlapping the other. Then we have, let this be the base, so we are going to say the number M, and this should be the number R. Now, the question here is telling you that 50 of them grow maize. So that 50, we are going to write it at the top here. So maize is 50. And 60 grill rice. So we are going to also write it there. Then the fourth crop is the intersection. That means them, they belong to maize. They also belong to what? Rice. Or they grill beans and they also grill rice. So these people, we call them the interceptors or the mediators. They are in the middle. So we are going to bring the wine at this place. Now, the moment we are able to bring the Y at the middle here, our job is almost getting to an end. What do we do? Drop the 50 that you've written here. Drop it here. Then you subtract the intersection. The 60 here also, we are going to drop it and subtract the intersection. And that gives us only three regions. That is region I, region I, I, and region I, I, I. The region I mean is not there because the question said at least, meaning there is no complement. At least there is no complement. So they mean that that means some did maize, some did rice. Some did maize, some did rice. Some also decided to do both. Now this region is called the region I which is maize only, maize only. That means they grow or they grew only maize. They didn't add rice. And this region is region I, I. That is, they grew maize, they also grew rice. And this region is region I, I, I. That is, rice only. They grew only rice. Then what do we have? We have our final one to be the universal set, which is written at the far right of the box. Now, this universal set, we said that it talks or sums everything together. It talks about all the people. So, if you take this Venn diagram, if you add all the regions together, or if you put all the regions together, you should get the universal set. So, mathematically, we can say that the region I, which is 50 minus Y, plus the region I, I, plus the region I, 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 should give you the universal set. So putting everything here together should be equal to this. Now this gives you an equation whereby you have to solve for Y. So here, we are saying that let the number M intersection R, which is both crops, be Y. So whatever we get for Y here answers the question, Find the number of farmers who grow both crops. So now let's work it out. Now you have negative Y, positive Y. They happen to cross out because we are getting zero. So now this gives you 50 plus 60. 50 plus 60 minus Y is equal to 80. So this is 110 minus Y is equal to 80. Then we have negative y is equal to 80, then it crosses to this. You will notice that subtracting 110 from 80 is impossible or incompetent. But we are going to turn it upside down. Subtract and negate our answer. And that gives us 30. So we are getting from here, we are going to get negative y is equal to negative 
30. Since we are talking about people, our answer should, be, should never be a negative. So therefore, we are going to divide both sides by negative 1 in order to get the y. So divide by negative 1, this will cancel out, then y is equal to 30. So it means the farmers that are in that village, 30 of them grow maize and young. For the introduction of Venn diagram, quickly press on the link, then you get the introduction. Then look at the last one, and look at the difference between these two. In a, in a class of 60 students, so in a class, that is the universal, 18 pass mathematics only. If the person has told you only. And 14 pass English only. Every student pass at least one of the two subjects. And they at least have been mentioned. So once you see at least, it means there is no region 4 or region I feel. Illustrate this information on the Venn diagram. How many students pass in both subjects? Very simple. So let's quickly draw our data. All right, our data. And say, um, in, a, in a class of 60, so let the number U, which is the universal set, be 60. Because from the question, they said it's 60. Then, they are talking about subjects. So we have mathematics, that is M. So mathematics. Then you have the English, that is E. So English language. Now let's look at the difference here. Here, they are saying that 18 pass mathematics only. So you don't write the 18 here. This mathematics here may be student that all includes students that did English. And this English here also includes students that did mathematics. So therefore, to be safe, let's write the only different or separately. Or we can just do it. Uh, the number M only. Because we know that the number M means mathematics. So the number M only, that is mathematics only. Then the number E only. From the question, what did they say? They said 18 past mathematics only, only mathematics, only mathematics. So 18 here. Then 14 past English only. So therefore, how many students have passed both subjects? Oh, we don't know. So we are going to say the number M intersection E. That is both subjects. Is we don't know. So let's represent the variable. Say B or A. So now that we have the data, we can represent this data on the Venn diagram simply and nicely. So let's draw our Venn diagram. We have two balls, one overlapping the other. One, go. So here becomes my universal from the question is 60. The subject I have is mathematics and English. Now let's take a very good note of something here. When the question gives you and it stated clearly that this only, this only, just put it in the region. So here, this is mathematics. So since the mathematics that has been given is only, I'll just put the 18 here, straightforward, without subtracting, okay? Why? Because of the only they are given to you. The same thing happens to English. 14 only do not subtract. Then we know that intersection. Um, that is the maths and English only. A is here. You don't subtract the intersection from the only. You should always take note of that. But you see, with this question, it says that 50 grow maize. You didn't see only. So if 50 grow maize, then you bring the 50 at the top. You bring it in, you subtract the intersection. But if it is only, you do not subtract. The moment you subtract, problem solved is going to be 
wrong. Because it is only good. So therefore, I know that all the ranges put together is equal to the universal set. So 18 plus 8 plus 14 is 60. We can solve this equation. Add 18 to 14. And that should give you uh, 20, 32. So you have 32 plus 8 is equal to 60. A is equal to 60 minus 32. A is equal to 28. So how many students pass in both subjects? Therefore, 28 students pass in both subjects. Now we can redraw the Venn diagram and put in the answers so that we will not get any variable. With this question, they can ask you how many students pass mathematics? To know those who pass mathematics, we are going to add the mathematics only to the intersection. Good. So we'll meet again next week if God permits. We'll be solving more questions on Venn diagram for we in basic eight, both with complement and without complement. So with these two questions, there are no complements. So we just look at factors. We've saw some example on that. Then we also look at Venn diagram, which the introduction was explained earlier, which has been uploaded or in our previous video. We just have to look at it. And kindly uh, let, us, let us receive your comments, your contribution, so that we know that we are really helping. Any question, you can drop it in the comment section. We will attend to you. We will meet again next week and we will continue with the Venn diagram. Who come? Anyway. Bye bye.